Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my final Europa League 2024 predictions. Yes, the final video I'm doing on this competition for this season at least. In terms of long format, I'm going to be going through every single quarterfinal matchup and then also predicting the rest of the bracket. In case you missed my Champions League video, the reason being is because I want to start focusing on international football completely. Maybe we'll get some updated shorts of my predictions, but... In terms of long format video, this is the final one. So let me know your predictions as always in the comments below. And let's get into it, starting off with Benfica versus Marseille. I'd say this is a proper even matchup because both these teams have not been the most convincing. Since Gasset was appointed as manager, Marseille were looking to improve their form massively. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang started scoring loads of goals. We even saw him score two in the Europa League clash against Villarreal in the first leg. They defeated them 4-0 and in the second, they slipped a bit. They lost 3-1, obviously still advancing though with the aggregate scoreline. And following that match, they have not won anything else. 2-0 to Ren, PSG, and then 3-1 to Lille, their latest score. Meanwhile, Benfica in the Europa League just squeezed through over Rangers in the round of 16, defeating them 3-2 on aggregate. First match finishing 2-2, second with a 1-0 victory. Rafa Silva, 66th minute goal. In the Portuguese League, Benfica have also just been squeezing through in many of their matches. Two consecutive 1-0 victories after advancing to the quarterfinals in the Europa League, but against their rivals, it has been no good. 5-0 massacre to Porto. And then Sporting got the best of them twice. One in a cup match, finishing 3-4 on aggregate. And then in the Portuguese League, they lost 2-1. I thought they'd be a lot more prolific with the likes of Di Maria, who has still been clutch for them at moments, but still, it just hasn't been enough at times. Benfica just all season have been rocky. We've even seen it in the Champions League, where they heavily disappointed in the group stage, just squeezing out to qualify for the Europa League. I don't know. You can truly downplay both these teams as much as you want. And whoever does advance... I'm sorry to say I don't see them advancing to the final. But if I'm going to lean towards one winner here, I will be picking Benfica. I think it's also going to be a similar style to how they defeated Rangers. Go for a 1-0 in the first leg, and then in the second, it finishes in a 1-1 draw. 2-1 on aggregate, Benfica advance to the semifinals. Probably means Benfica are going to go out now, because whatever I say for this club, the opposite happens. Marseille definitely at the moment hold a more consistent attacker like Aubameyang, so it's really up to him to step up and potentially make the difference, but I do see Benfica just holding their own, at least for one of the legs, and yeah, advancing. I don't know, that match is too much of a headache. Let's just move on to potentially an easier one to call Liverpool versus Atalanta. I say easier, who knows? I mean, Liverpool have been one of the concrete favorites for this competition since the beginning, missing out on qualifying for the Champions League, but still doing tremendously here. In Klopp's final season, you know they're going to be giving it their all to win some more silverware for their final season. Even with the rotation of the squad going around throughout the Europa League, they are still pulling through massively. In the round of 16 against Sparta Praha, they absolutely annihilated the Czech side, 11-2 on aggregate. They've had some matches in the Premier League that didn't necessarily translate to that kind of form, drawing to City, squeezing through against Brighton, drawing to Manchester United last weekend, which halted them in the Premier League title race, but also getting knocked out to Manchester United in the FA Cup, losing 4-3. Jota should be returning in the second leg. That is going to be a massive addition to the attack, though, along with Trent Alexander-Arnold as well in the same position of his return date. Yes, they'll most likely be missing Allison, but Kelleher has still been doing a fantastic job. Liverpool are obviously in a very tight position in terms of the Premier League title race, along with this competition. Having to play the Europa League on Thursday, follow with the Premier League straight after is going to be a lot on the players. So it's going to be interesting to see how he rotates the squad going into this fixture. Liverpool has still been doing quite solid in the Premier League. There's no denying that the title race between them, Manchester City and Arsenal has been phenomenal. Coming up against a side that are currently sixth in the Serie A, yeah, they're going to be favorites in this. Atalanta advanced over Sporting, who were also in terrific form. And they went through a confidence flow after, defeating Napoli 3-0. But after that, Coppa Italia semi-final first leg defeat to Fiorentina. And 2-1 defeat to Cagliari. So they are on the losing streak at the moment. Not looking to be in good form going in to this fixture against such a top team. Regardless, there are some incredible players in the squad. My personal favorite, obviously, Pashalic. Coop Miners and Lukman have been solid. The Ketela has regained his form with this club. They have a lot of great individuality, but I don't think it will be enough against such a top Premier League team. Liverpool definitely should not be taking this fixture lightly. Atalanta are still a quality team, but they should be advancing to the semifinals. In the first one, I'm going to say they're able to crush them 4-0. Might be super ambitious, we'll see. But then in the second leg, 
it's definitely a bit more relaxed. 1-1 one, one draw. Liverpool playing away. They might want to not play their strongest squad, especially given that Premier League title race. Yeah, this is what I'm going to go for. Moving on to the other side of the bracket, two City A clubs facing each other, AC Milan and Roma. The last time these two sides faced in the City A, Jose Mourinho was still in charge. Milan were able to get the best of them both times they faced this season, but we've seen Roma have really shifted gears since they have appointed De Rossi. Apart from losing to Inter Milan back in February and Brighton in the Europa League second leg clash of the round of 16 where they lost 1-0, they have been undefeated. You can't argue that they haven't played many massive teams yet apart from Inter Milan, but still. De Rossi is getting the best out of some of these players, including Pellegrini and Dybala. Roma also made a massive statement against Brighton in the last Europa League clash. Yes, I said they lost 1-0 in the second leg, but prior to that, they defeated them 4-0. Milan, on the other hand, got the best of Slavia Praha, did concede quite a bit too many goals, but other than that, still absolutely outshine them in the attack scoring seven goals against them in total some inconsistent patches for the club but overall they've been gaining the momentum once again leaking a goal here and there but the last match they lost was the second leg of the europa league playoffs against Ren after already securing a 3-0 victory against them in the first leg so they're going into this match winning all of their matches in march and they're going to be dangerous in this fixture with their incredible attacking options that they're able to rotate sometimes they are left a bit exposed defensively but in terms of goal scoring threat they have way too many options it's a really tough one to call since that Rossi has really revolutionized Roma these days but based off of AC Milan's form as well and the fact that Roma haven't had too much of a challenge yet and when they did they crumbled I think that AC Milan can just get the best of them in this fixture I think it's going to be very high scoring and close though and Roma will definitely put off a fantastic fight I'll go for a 3-2 victory for AC Milan in the first leg and in the second it's a 2-2 draw. I definitely won't be surprised if I'm wrong on this though, but if you're gonna also judge it off of the City A table, Milan are sitting at second, Roma at fifth. They should be the ones to advance to the semis, but definitely do not count out Roma, who yeah, were also Europa League finalists last year. But yeah, at the same time, AC Milan were Champions League semi-finalists. It's too tough to call. And then final match, Bayer Leverkusen versus West Ham. Bayer Leverkusen are advancing. Now, obviously a massive reason why I'm already stating this is because Bayer Leverkusen are on an unbelievable unbeaten streak at the moment under Xabi Alonso. In all competitions as well, by the way. They're already on their way to win the Bundesliga after Bayern have crumbled too much. They tactically do the job every time. Sometimes they are scared and have to fight till the last minute, but still, always somehow finding a way. We've even seen it in the Europa League recently against Karabakh. We really thought the Azerbaijani side would be the first ones to defeat Bayer Leverkusen. But two stoppage time goals from Patrick Schick secured them a victory, finishing 3-2 in the second leg. I mean, nobody wants to rule out this side. Yes, they're coming up against a solid Premier League team, who were just Conference League champions last season. Sure, West Ham's form in the Europa League is looking pretty convincing. I mean, they just defeated Freiburg in the round of 16-5-1 on aggregate. Second leg finishing 5-0, so you can't argue that they had a more convincing scoreline in the round of 16 than Bayer Leverkusen did. They're a great counter-attacking team, but they do tend to leak way too many goals in some of their fixtures. They lost 4-3 to Newcastle at the very end of March, drew 2-2 with relegation zone Burnley. Back in February, yes, they were top teams, but they lost 3-0 to Manchester United and 6-0 to Arsenal, followed with the 2-0 defeat to Nottingham Forest. And with Bayer Leverkusen just always finding a way, I can't see West Ham getting the best of them. We'll see. It's football. Anything's possible. And all unbeaten streaks come to an end at some point, even at the most random times. And West Ham are a very solid side, so it wouldn't be the most outlandish thing to think that maybe Bayer Leverkusen can be halted here. But... Just judging on their form, they're one of the best teams in Europe right now. The way Alonso utilizes his wing fullbacks has been exceptional. Grimaldo and Fringpong have been excellent. Florian Wirtz, a top baller. Patrick Schick's return from injury has obviously been immense. Too many players to go through in this side. Tactically sound. I think they can do it. I think they're going to beat West Ham over both legs. In the first one, I'm going for a 3-1 victory. And in the second, I'll say it slowed down a tad bit, just 1-0. When they go to london now moving on to the semi-finals i already said at the beginning whoever wins between benfica or marseille i don't see advancing to the final maybe we'll see a miracle but i think liverpool has what it takes to make it the other matchup though ac milan versus Bayer leverkusen is a bit tougher to call yes leverkusen are undefeated right now but who knows if they will continue to be by the time this matchup rolls around now i forgot to mention this earlier Bayer leverkusen just need one more point 
to secure the Bundesliga title against Werder Bremen before this recording. But maybe this is the perfect opportunity for Xabi Alonso to rotate the players more in the Bundesliga and focus on this competition to take down a top side with a lot of legacy. Although Leverkusen are on an unbeaten streak, AC Milan know this and everything good comes to an end. You will 100% prepare for a side like Leverkusen. I don't think it's criminal to think AC Milan will be ending Leverkusen's streak no matter what position they're in in the Bundesliga. They obviously have more experience and legacy in European Cup competitions. They're two behind in the City A, so maybe at this point that they'll just put all the eggs in their basket in the Europa League to win some kind of silverware. Nothing's impossible here, but I am favoring Leverkusen to advance to the final. Continue that incredible momentum. I'm seeing a lot of people predicting the same final as me and would be incredible to see Xabi Alonso coming up against one of his former clubs, where many people were anticipating he could potentially join them at the end of the season with Klopp leaving, but he already announced he's not doing that. Again, who knows if Xabi Alonso will even be undefeated still at this point, but if he somehow is, I'm saying it ends here. Liverpool do win the Europa League under Klopp. I don't know what's going to happen in the Premier League, but in the Europa League, I think they can win this bit of silverware, still give him some kind of incredible farewell to celebrate with the fans of Liverpool. I see it being narrow though for sure, maybe like a 1-0, 2-1 scoreline, Liverpool just squeezing through, and Bayer Leverkusen are definitely not going to make this easy, obviously they want to continue their incredible momentum, but also, I mean, winning some silverware finally with this club. The last time they won any sort of UEFA silverware was all the way back in 1988. And that was their only time doing it. So maybe they can add a second trophy to their collection. But I still think Liverpool got it. Best of luck to all the clubs in this competition. Let me know what you would change if you have any disagreements with me. Thank you all for making it to the end. Make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already. And subscribe if you're new. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care. Lauku noche.